Okay, we're going to go ahead and get ourselves started here this morning. So, one, thanks very much. Uh, thanks to all of you for taking the time to join us this morning. Um, I know it's uh, early, especially if you're not on the East Coast like most of us. Uh, so thanks for taking the time to join us. We're really looking forward to telling you a little bit about what we're doing here. What we'll be talking about here today are changes to our My Benefit Check platform and real-time benefit information in your e-prescribing workflow. So I want to kind of show you what we had done, the feedback we heard from you folks, how we've changed it here just recently in the last couple of weeks, and walk you through a demonstration of all that. So my name is Steve Childress. I've worked for Dr. First for a little over five years, and I do a lot of the product training and user outreach. Um, I speak at web con or at user conferences and all sorts of things. So if you're working today, if you're coming to us today from one of our EMR partners, you know, if you need somebody to talk at one of your user conferences or something, just let me know. But in the meantime, I do a lot of user and user outreach, et cetera. Uh, my background happens to be 10 years plus in, in big pharma before I came to Dr. First. So I've spent a lot of time with providers and, and uh, out in the field, in and out of your offices. I have a pretty good feel for some of the things you face. So we'll talk about some of the things as I see them and hopefully uh, you guys will get some value out of today's webinar. So the first thing is, what is my benefit check? Um, my benefit check is simply, if you think about a prescription going to the pharmacy, the pharmacy does a trial claim of that before they actually process it out to the to the or give it to the patient. They do a trial claim to verify coverage, to verify no prior authorization is needed, etc. We're doing the same thing, except we're doing it before you send it to the pharmacy. What we're trying to do is give you the same information the pharmacy gets, but we're giving it to you right as you're prescribing. And so we're going to run a trial claim as you're creating a prescription. We're communicating with the payers that we're connected to, and we're doing a drug coverage determination, a patient's out-of-pocket cost, personalized or, or what I like to preferred pharma, uh, therapeutic alternatives. Kind of depends on what the payer pushes us. Um, alternate pharmacy pr uh, pricing is if the patient happens to have mail order benefit usually sometimes it could be a specialty pharmacy benefit depending on the drug but a lot of times it's does, does the patient actually have a mail order benefit to their pharmacy benefit um, and we're also doing electronic prior authorization through this all kind of real-time connectivity with our payer uh, partners so that's what my benefit check is we call it my benefit check that's our name for it but ultimately it's real-time benefit information for the prescriptions as you're writing them so why did we do all of this? Um, we did it because when it's all said and done, there's really no transparency for you as to what a drug costs. You can have multiple patients on the same plan and prescribe the same drug and they can show up at the pharmacy and pay different pricing depending on what their benefit structure is, where they are in their deductible package, any number of different things. And so it's very difficult for you as a prescriber to understand what is this drug actually going to cost my patient? And we know what happens when a patient shows up at the pharmacy and finds that a drug is too expensive, right? A lot of possibilities. One is that the, the patient calls you and says, I need another drug. Two, the pharmacy tries to track you down. Or three, the patient tells the pharmacist, I'll come back for that, and they never do. And I'm sure you've all had it happen because I've been out in the field talking to you folks. And you tell me the stories about when you prescribe some for something for a patient, they come back in to your office for a follow-up two, three months later. You try to ask them about how they're doing on a particular drug, and they tell you, well, I never actually picked that up. I, I, I couldn't afford it. And the fact is, that wouldn't have happened if you had had any knowledge of what the preferred alternatives are, or whether a drug was covered, what it was really going to cost, because you might have been able to make a change right then and there that would make this easier for the patient to, to actually get the medication. We're also gonna talk a teeny bit about formulary here because when all is said and done, the formulary that's in e-prescribing, in our e-prescribing system, can be valuable, 
but it's really plan level formulary. It's not patient specific. And my benefit check takes it to that level, right? It becomes patient specific trial claims as opposed to what does Aetna say for their, you know, or their preferred list of drugs for Aetna 1234 or Aetna or Cigna 2345, whatever happens to plan happens to be. It's not about what is their formulary. It's about what is covered for this specific patient. And that's the power of my benefit check is that we're truly doing a patient specific trial claim, just like a pharmacy would do. So I always pause and we talk a little bit about formulary because I think there's a lot of misconceptions about formulary out in the field. When I go out and talk to people about it, they're always surprised that the formulary isn't necessarily what they've scanned in at their front desk, right? Because your patient comes into the front desk, your receptionist says, good morning, good to see you today. Let's verify your name and address. Can I scan your car, right? That's all information that's in your system. And yes, the name and address information gets into ours, but the insurance information stays with you. Because what we're concerned about in the e-prescribing side is the prescription benefit, not the medical benefit. And often those things are separate and distinct. Not always, same cards, some sometimes, but often they're separate and distinct. Excuse me, folks, I'm a little sniffly this morning. Um, and so, what I want to let you know here is how this differs, where we get our formulary. So when you see it in our system, what it means, what it tells you, uh, and frankly, what the limitations of it are. So if you're looking at our test patient here in front of you, David Cross, right? So you as a provider came in, you logged into your EMR, you, David's coming in to see you here. He's beginning, they're bringing him back now. You pull up his record and you can scan through everything, right? And you've got David in front of you. You do your, your, your office visit with David. And you say, look, David, I need to give you a prescription for your blood pressure or whatever it happens to be. And you click on something in your EMR, whether it's a link or a button or something, a tab. And that tab brings you into e-prescribing, which is us, right? Which is Dr. First. And if you're not familiar really with Dr. First, Dr. First is the e-prescribing functionality in like 300 different EMRs in the United States. So a lot of people see it this way, but they come to us through their EMR platforms. So as you click on that button in your EMR platform that's gonna bring up e-prescribing, what we're doing, what your EMR is doing is it's sending us the information of the patient that we should have pulled up when you get there, right? Because if you have David Cross pulled up in your E e EMR, when you get the e-prescribing, that's the patient you want pulled up. So your EMR is telling us that. That's the patient that we need to pull up. And when it passes all that information, one of the first things that we do is that we begin to communicate with the prescription hub or the, the distribution hubs, right? And we as Dr. First move something like 100 million prescriptions a year through our, our systems. And we communicate with the hubs where we send those and we say, what information has been reported for David Cross? And we send them David Cross's information and they come back and they say, the payers have reported this pharmacy benefit information for David Cross. And they'll tell us, David Cross is on Aetna 1234 or Cigna 2345 or whatever it happens to be, Caremark, you know, Plan Silver B, whatever. And they give us that information and we can take that and we can bounce it off a really big database and we can say, okay, here is Aetna 1234. What drugs does Aetna 1234 report as tier one, tier two, tier three, which ones have prior authorizations, which ones have step therapy requirements. And we can pull all that information down. And then as you search for a drug, which in this case, you can see the prescriber has searched for lisinopril, Obviously, test case here, lots of silly codes, but we did that for just purposes of, of being able to show it to you here. But as soon as you kind of search for that code, we bounce it off that database and pull the code appropriate for that drug. Aetna 1234 reports that lisinopril 10 milligrams is tier one of tier of three or whatever they report, right? And that's all great. That's valuable information for you as a prescriber but it's not 
David Cross specific, it's the plan level data. And that's where my benefit check gets really powerful. Because my benefit check says, we need deeper than this. We need to be David Cross specific on coverage. Because frankly, David Cross may have that in a one, two, three, four, but his employer may have actually carved something out of that in a one, two, three, four, or their, their prescription benefit, right? Or they may have structured a little differently or whatever it happens to be, because all of those things happen. And this may not be a perfect representation of what David's formulary is. So that's why we do these kind of trial claim and prescription or, or patient level benefit information, because we want it to be truly patient specific for you as you are prescribing this drug. So let me show you kind of what the current My Benefit check messages look like. Everybody's probably seen these already. Um, well, they're not current right now. We just literally took this out of whack, out of um, out of circulation last week, right? So in this case, what happened is we popped up this message, but we laid it over top of your e-prescribing. And this message has a lot of valuable information in it. It's giving you a coverage determination. That's what that green bar is, right? It's telling you the message that's been sent to us by the payer. This message is covered, right? Or whatever it happens to be. It's giving you the patient's cost at the pharmacy where you were sending the prescription, in this case, CVS uh, 3269, right? So here's the 30-day supply, CVS 369, and here's the patient's cost when they're going to show up at CVS 3269 to pick this prescription up. Now, that is where you were sending the prescription. This, In this case, this message is also telling you, hey, this insurance plan is telling us that these are the preferred alternatives, these are their costs, and this, this is also telling you that oh, by the way, this patient has a mail order benefit and these preferred medications are also available through mail order and here's their cost. And you can see the day's supply and all that stuff. And in the past, all you did was click a radio button to the right of one of those um, options and you could either send the script through as you wrote it or change it to a different, uh, a different drug, a different recommendation. Now that's great, but what we really heard out there from a lot of you was, well, good information, but I really hate it when you pop things up over top of my workflow. Um, it slows me down. I'm waiting for the pop-up to form or whatever it happens to be. And we heard you. And we said, okay, we need to figure out how to fix this. So if, if most of you may be familiar with the fact we did something similar with coupons about four or five months ago, where once upon a time, the coupons popped up in a little box and we had the same feedback, right? Please don't make them pop up. So we said, okay, let's fix that. And we took them and we incorporated them directly into e-prescribing, no pop-up, just right on the e-prescribing screens. And we found that actually you guys interacted with the coupons four times as more, four times more often than you did previously. So we said, we probably need to do the same thing here for my benefit check, this real-time benefit information. We need to find a way to incorporate it directly into e-prescribing so that it's not popping up over May's workflow. So that's what we've done. So here's kind of what the new screens look like, right? So this is just part of e-prescribing now. You're writing a prescription. In this case, the provider searched for Ambien and wrote a prescription for Ambien 10 milligram. And we have delivered kind of in the e-prescribing workflow this information, right? Here's the, the coverage determination, the patient's out-of-pocket costs, at the pharmacy the script's being sent to, the, the therapeutic alternatives, the mail order information, it's all here. It just is incorporated directly into e-prescribing as opposed to being a pop-up or an overlay of e-prescribing. Now, what I want to do is kind of walk you through a few different scenarios, and then we'll have time here to take some questions. Um, I'm also going to offer you to give you my slides from today so you can look at them, share them in your office. Uh, if you look over in the little webinar panel, um, you can see that there's a little uh, expandable feature called handouts. My slides are over there in PDF format for you. You're welcome to download them. This webinar is actually being recorded today. If you'd like the recording, what I'll try to do is send out a link to it here a little later today. It usually takes it a little while to process the recording and create it and turn it into a file. But once it does, a little later today, I'll send out an email that has a link to the recording for all of you. So you're welcome to that today. But let's at least walk you through the demonstration 
and you get a feel for how this all works in your in your e-prescribing. So you've come into your EMR or you've come directly into us, depending on what your methodology for reaching us is, right? And you've got your patient record pulled up and you're now going to search for a drug. So we're going to search for our drug. We we've, we've typed in Ambien. This works. The the real-time benefit information or my benefit check functions whether you search for a drug by name, whether you prescribe using a favorite, or whether you actually just renew something that's already an active medication. All of those will trigger the process. So in this case, we've ser- we're just walking through one scenario, but we're searching for Ambien by name. We're going to um, return the strengths and formulations of Ambien here, so you can quickly select one of those, and you'll get to that SIG screen or the SIG detail screen. So you as a prescriber will determine how your patient is going to take this, right? And as you do that, and as you click continue, that's when my benefit check goes to work. My benefit check communicates directly with this payer and they say, okay, here is the patient, here is the drug, here is the pharmacy. Let's do a trial claim and determine what is that patient gonna pay when they get to the pharmacy. Now, we return that information to you. Here you can see, you know, it's covered, et cetera. Now, one of the things that I hear about people say, well, why doesn't it tell me what it costs at other pharmacies, right? And that's one of the things I always kind of pause on for people too, is that we're doing a trial claim of the drug, the pharmacy, and the patient information. You have to have all three to do the trial claim. So if we said, you know, it's at CVS 3269, but we do a geo map search for some reason and we say, okay, but there's a Walmart and a Rite Aid and a, a Costco nearby. Let's price those two. We don't do that. One, those are multiple claims. We would literally have to send multiple claims. And that's something we don't do. Two, we have to be very careful. The payers cannot steer you to a particular pharmacy chain because they have better contracted pricing there. So for us, The easiest way to avoid any of that kind of issue is we price the claim at the pharmacy you were sending the prescription to, as well as offer the mail order information or the the specialty pharmacy information if the patient happens to have that benefit and the payer can push it to us. It really depends on what the payer pushes our way. So, Here's our coverage information, right? And you can see now, one of the things that's changed a little bit in our screens is that, yes, the coverage determination's there, all the options are there, but instead of radio buttons, now next to everything except the original script information and the original pharmacy information is a little change button. So if you want to change the drug, if you see, okay, this is a $200 drug, let's change it to a $25 drug or a $40 drug, whatever it happens to be, all you have to do is click on the change button. As you do that, it will take you back to the SIG screen. It does that simply because one, um, we don't try to translate the SIG details or de- the, the details from one drug to another drug. So it's gonna take you back to the SIG screen. You'll still have to complete the SIG details, but we will change the drug or the pharmacy depending on what you've selected, but you'll have to put in the detail of the prescription. So you'll complete that, click continue. And in this case, you can see we've done one last kind of coverage determination, but we've done it right as we've dropped you to the prescription review screen. So you can see that script as it's being sent to the pharmacy. You click okay, and that is done just like that. And that was something very simple for you to see whether it was covered, see the cost, change the drug on the fly, and send the prescription without any kind of pop-up or overlay. It's all just part of e-prescribing now. So I wanna do another scenario for you. So in this case, we're gonna search for another drug, right? And this happens to be Pulmazyme. So we're just gonna pitch in the first five or six letters of Pulmazyme, we're gonna search, we get our strengths and you know we, we only return one drug here, we get our strengths and formulations, we select it, we go to our SIG screen, we put in our details for how we're gonna prescribe this drug. And in this case, we've gotten our coverage determination, 
but you can see we've got a red determination, which means it's not covered. And not only do we get a red determination, this one tells us that to get this, it's gonna require prior authorization. And in this example, we've even taken that farther, which to show you that even the alternative requires a prior authorization. So whatever you choose here, and we do have this come up in some instances, but it's not a frequent occurrence. Usually the, the alternatives are gonna be something you can quickly change to. But in this occurrence, you can easily see the two drugs. You can make the changes. If you change to the preferred alternative and it still requires prior authorization, it's still going to give you the opportunity to start the prior auth. But in this case, we're just going to start the prior authorization, click start. We're going to tell you that we're initiating that process. Uh, we're going to tell you that, that we have received it and begun communicating with the payer to pull down what we call the question set, which is really just the prior authorization questions. And then once we have them, we're going to drop them right into the EPA Plus tab. You'll be able to open that up and see the prior authorization, or your staff member can quickly open that up, see the questions that are there, and all you have to do is click on Start, and you'll be able to get that prior authorization go. Okay? And in the process of this being real-time information, we are literally communicating with the payer to return these appropriate questions for you so that you can answer them directly and get this all taken care of uh, right in workflow for you to do the prior authorization. I know lots of you love prior authorizations, um, but you can do these right in workflow if you choose to, or in you know, most instances, if you see the prior authorization determination, you'll be able to change to a drug that doesn't require a prior authorization. So it's really gonna give you those options to make it easier for you, the pharmacist, the patient, Everybody, so you're not getting callbacks. The pharmacist isn't having to make them. The patient isn't having to wait for a drug. Um, you can make these determinations right at the point of prescribing or right at the point of encounter with your patient while they're standing right there in front of you. You can make these determinations as to what's the best thing for them, discuss cost, discuss whatever you happen to need, and make the decision as you need it. Okay. So we got about five minutes here. Uh, over in the web panel, um, there is a little area where you can type in questions. So I'm gonna let you do that. Um, in the meantime, I'm also gonna give you my email address. So this email address, epainquiry at drfirst.com, comes directly to me. Um, I would very much like any feedback you happen to have. Um, if you love this, if you hate this, if you really wanna ask me, tell me that, you know, if you would just do this, it would be perfect. If you would, make this tweak, it would be just a little bit better, or you know, please stop whatever it happens to be. Give us your feedback, we certainly want that. And while you're kind of, if you wanna type in a question, I'll be happy to answer them, but in the meantime, I'm gonna answer a few that always get asked. So the first one is, what does this cost as a prescriber? It doesn't cost you anything. It's just built into the e-prescribing functionality, there's no cost to you. It does not require any installation of any software, it does not require special usernames or passwords. It is all part of your e-prescribing workflow. And as long as you can access e-prescribing, you can get in there, you can see the real-time benefits as you write a prescription, and you can actually process the prior authorizations. The other big question I get is, what plans are you connected to? A lot, okay? So um, when you think about who we're connected to, right, there are probably six big ones in the country. We're connected to four of the biggest. We're connected to Humana, United Healthcare Optum, ESI, Caremark. We're connected to a handful of the blues right now. We're in a pilot mode with the blues. They include, um, I think, uh, BCBS of Minnesota, BCBS of New Jersey, Florida Blue. BCBS of Alabama right now, but we're in pilot with them. And so we're expanding that, we hope, very shortly. On top of that, we're also connected to DSDR use. But when you pile just the first four, right? Humana, United Healthcare, CVS Caremark, and ESI together, that is tens of millions of lives where you can get a real time coverage determination and cost for a prescription as you write it. So we really hope that you'll find all this beneficial today. I'm gonna to leave my webinar panel open here. I, I thank you for joining us. Please feel free to copy my email address down and send me whatever you wanna send me. 
Um, feel free to download the handout. Um, it is the slides in PDF format. You are welcome to have them, share them with other staff members, whatever you happen to need. If you're one of our EMR partners on the call today and you'd like some additional information, you are welcome to reach out to me. If you wanna set something up directly with your users, we can do some different things. So, you know, feel free to do that. Otherwise, thanks for joining me on a Friday morning, folks. Uh, it's a wet Friday morning here in the East, at least where I'm at. It's kind of pouring rain, but we're all gonna survive it. Um, we appreciate your time. I'll leave this open for just a few more minutes for anybody who wants to download the handout. Watch for an email from me later today. We'll give you the link to the, the video today. You'll have to put up with my sniffles today. I apologize. Um, but we'll, uh, we'll give you a link to that, so you're welcome to share that too. And otherwise, enjoy your Friday. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, folks. Thanks again.